Welcome to this Sustainability Engage module. I'm John Thorne. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator here at the Glasgow School of Art. It's my job uh, to support you with environmental and social justice issues within your practice and also to look at how you can take that forward into future work and practice. I'm not part of any department and it's the Sustainability in Action group that meets regularly three or four times a year that prioritises my work. So what we'd like to do today is just give you uh, an introduction to sustainability, environmental and social justice and what it means at the GSA because it is different here because we're systems changers, we're designers, we're architects and we communicate things like environmental and social justice through our creative practice. So there's this video introduction and also there's a reading list of videos and short articles which will be augmented with ebooks as they become available and what we're going to do is have short videos, reading lists, uh, some time face to face through Zoom to actually discuss these issues and how you work with them within your practice and then a time to reflect it as well. So this video is not more than 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to look at the state the world's in at the moment, which is the depressing bit. And then we're very quickly going to go on to the creative response. So we can take air samples from Arctic, Antarctic ice cores over the 800,000 years, pretty steady up and down of uh, CO2. But as you can see on the right, with the Industrial Revolution, we're suddenly way out of normal. And this is something we need to address. We're up to about 410 points, uh, parts per million now. It is a question of speed. The quicker we do this, the better. So this graph is really explaining that if we take action now, it's a lot easier to take action. And if we wait another 10 years, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, otherwise, we'll be using up the budget of CO2 we can realist realistically use and still keep temperatures down to 1.5 degrees. It's not one issue, it's a systems issue. So these are multiple issues which can be addressed through better design and making and communicated through art, which is why the art school is such an interesting place for an environmentalist like me to work. So we're looking at things like ozone depletion and ocean acidification caused by CO2 and chemical pollution, land conversion from forest to agricultural land, biodiversity loss. And these are all things that can be tackled individually. We have changed the world hugely. We used to be 1% human to what we ate. 99% of the world's mammals were wild animals. And now it's the other way around. 99% of the world's mammals are humans and what we eat and 1% are wild animals. These are major changes and major changes to our temperatures and weather as well. With wet bulb temperatures rising above 34, 35 degrees, it becomes very difficult to live in places like Southeast Asia and the Indian subcontinent. We're losing large amounts of insects, but again, this is an agricultural system issue we can address as designers and systems designers and change the way we make agriculture. It's also a complex issue because insect loss is down to a wide range of issues, not just use of pesticides or fertilizers. There's also feedback loops where white ice, which ref usually reflects heat back into space, is melted because of global warming, and then dark water absorbs more uh, heat and causes more global warming. So there's these uh, things we term feedback loops happening as well. And this causes weather changes and system changes like flooding. And this was Glasgow back in the autumn. So this is this is now, but it can seem a vague distant threat, climate change. We really need to see climate change as something that's coming to us a lot faster. We can have this cognitive dissonance going on in our heads where we think it's so lovely, but there's maybe a, a darker side to it. So last a couple of Februarys ago, it was very warm, but we were all worried about it not being quite normal. And we're, we're, maybe we've been promised future things like the Star Trek future or hoverboards, which haven't arrived yet. So all these psychological issues going on, and maybe we just think it's too complex and we end up putting our heads in the sand, which is a logical um, option for a lot of people. But as designers and architects and artists, I think we can do better. We may be angry. We may be in anticipatory mourning for the things we're losing. We may be losing ourselves in hedonism. We may be just sticking a paper bag on our head and hiding away. And these are logical responses. We're also told to do things like recycling, which might not be the thing to actually fix the system. And we'll discuss that more. Maybe we're being asked to do small things which aren't that useful. Artists have had a great response. Carl Jung Jung is a Swedish uh, artist who takes away the space used by cars and graphically illustrates that. Isaac Cordell, politicians discussing climate change, both funny and moving at the same time. Things like this have put me off eating fish because bycatch is part of fishing and it can get tangled up in animals. Greenpeace again came out with this campaign that 
Head and Shoulders contains palm oil, which is causing rainforest destruction and linking people washing their hair to rainforest destruction. Beauty as well. This is Sleeping Sperm Whales and Blue Planet 2, and it's important to still recognize there is a lot of beauty in the world. What sort of messages are we taking into the, the future? You know, will the, will the fossils of the future, and this is by heartless machine, human fossils, will, will this be the kind of image that our future uh, human humanity will actually see? The response at GSA has been amazing. Jovana Radjlovic, uh, MSA architecture student, bacterial celluloid buildings, which could be crumpled up and reused, recognizing buildings aren't permanent. Angela Carposi, textile designer, totally organic to Grisho range. We also support Fashion Revolution Week, which tackles these ethical uh, issues. Karen Westland worked in ethical silver and gold, and now GSA and all silversmith and jewelry departments in Scotland because of people like Karen and student Sophie Dorr actually lobbied for ethical silver. Rosie Giblin designed a front piece for the Calais refugee camp, which she worked at. Uh, Alice McCabe connected fire uh, that happens in clothing manufacturing with labels on garments. Uh, students have reused surplus food and also connected us better to the use of energy. Josh Hoskins grew his own bike from flax. Uh, Cassandra McIntyre, a master's fashion design student, pioneered zero waste, pack, paste, zero waste pattern cutting at the GSA. Beth Farini weaved with plastic coated wire. GSA Sustainability funds the permaculture um, garden up at the forest. And of course, Sofa for Life, the sofa you can keep for life. We champion things like cross-laminated timber in architecture instead of concrete and steel and promote the work of artists like David Duran, who maybe provide this future visioning that we all need uh, to show us that life could be different. We talk about individual responsibility. So your responsibility is limited, but as a designer, as an architect, as an artist, if you can do more, you should, but you don't have to do everything. And we also maybe need new tools. So we link to feminism, gender issues, race issues, and try to learn from our colonialism and also what indigenous people and uh, people of color and people living in different countries do and have done in the past. We try and live with compassion and kindness to each other and look after ourselves by supporting things like GSA yoga. We support community activity, not because of the plastic, for example, these beach cleaners might pick up, but because it provides a sense of community and maybe helps us understand how much plastic there is and maybe we should be doing something about it. We put on films and invite speakers like fashion, natural fashion dyer India Flint and peace activist and general superstar Satish Kumar in for talks. And we also link to things like MSAs, Missing in Architecture, which brings a female voice into architecture, uh, which is often dominated by others. Climate Psychology Alliance, try and understand psychology better. CEDA, Scottish Ecological Design Association, great for designers and architects. Wellbeing Economy Alliance, replacing GDP measures of the economy with well-being. GSA is responsible art and design society. The image at the beginning with the donut of the um, that the economy either being too little and causing social problems or too much and causing environmental problems is from donut economics. Psychology is from engaging with climate change. And we're better to discuss all these issues within the studio. This is made for discussing these issues. And we have this great ethos at the GSA already to start looking at these issues. That's GSA sustainability. As well as these small videos, we're going to have reading lists, ebooks, and really try and find out what environmental and social injustice social justice can do for your practice. There'll be plenty of time to reflect and face-to-face -face, uh, Zoom meetings as well. Thanks.